Hello, we're in a new place, don't panic. I moved, that's why I've been gone. This is my new office. Lighting's probably weird, sound is probably weird. You can probably hear the children screaming outside, but don't worry, they can also hear me. I made sure my potato vine was in frame so that you guys can watch it grow or it'll die. Guess we'll find out. So we are getting back to the Twilight rewrite today. Hey, if you're new, we're rewriting the Twilight series. But we're gonna have to do a little backpedaling because on Twitch, we compiled the last five chapters or chapters six through 10 and I changed a few things. Okay, so we added this scene with Lauren at school. After Bella has dinner with Edward, the next morning, Lauren returns her jacket. Basically, I cut out that annoying part where she's trying to Google what a vampire is and somehow finds information. So I made that scene come up with nothing. And then she confides in Lauren because Lauren is a mythology nerd. So we've got this scene now, Edward being weird, blah, blah, blah. Under the shelter of the cafeteria roof's overhang, Lauren was waiting, her eyes about to bug out of their sockets. Over her arm, bless her, was my jacket. Hey, Lauren, I said when we were a few feet away. Jessica said to give you this, she said, quickly pushing it into my hands. Thanks, I said. Good morning, Lauren, Edward said politely. Hi, she said bluntly. Want me to walk with you? She asked me without looking at Edward. I shrugged out of Edward's jacket and handed it to him before wrapping myself in my own. Uh, sure. I looked at Edward. I'll see you after school, he said coolly, melding into a passing crowd. Lauren watched him disappear, then looked at me. What the fuck? What? Did you go home with him? She asked. No, I said. We turned to walk to class. We had dinner, then he dropped me off. He's weird, she said. You don't think he's weird? Lauren, I started. Then I glanced around at the milling students and pulled her between two buildings. I kept my voice low. Can I ask you something crazy? Her eyes were wide. Do you need help? No, no, Edward's fine, I promise, I assured her. Even if I wasn't certain, he's probably listening in on Lauren's thoughts and I didn't want to put her in danger by accident. Actually, maybe this should wait until we weren't at school. Can we meet up later tonight? Her mouth dropped open. Yeah, sure, she said quickly. Where? I thought for half a second before coming up with the obvious and only option. La push? Her light eyebrows shot toward her hairline. I'll explain there, I said. I'll pick up some food, it'll be fun. Just us? Lauren asked quietly. I nodded absently, looking over my shoulder in case Edward had appeared. Yeah, want to meet up there or should I pick you up? We can meet there, Lauren said. I really appreciate it, I told her. I gotta go. So that was chapter 10. We already edited chapter 11 and I went through and removed all the parts where Bella like refers to Edward being a vampire because in our most recent edit, she doesn't know yet. She's kind of going to find out from Lauren. So she goes through her whole boring school day. I might cut all that stuff with Jessica where they like care what Edward's doing. By the way, if you haven't seen any of the other videos, we're changing up a few things. It's kind of the same. Jacob is Jasmine, Eric is Erica, Lauren is a mythology nerd and she plays a much bigger role. Bella's not quite so annoying and misogynist. We're just making little tweaks. Oh, she also has a knife. That's important. I have a playlist if you want to check out the rest. If not, you'll catch up, it's fine. So now we have to figure out where to add the scene with Lauren. So this is chapter 11, she plays sport with Mike. Badminton. Oh my god. He smiled wider, flashing his gleaming teeth, asked the questions, and he was gone. The car speeding down the street and disappearing around the corner before I could even collect my thoughts. I smiled as I walked to the house. Um, I'm gonna take out I smiled as I walked to the house because she has plans with Lauren, so she'd probably be thinking about that. That night, Edward starred in my dreams, as usual. No, we're going to La Push. I haven't fully planned what's gonna happen in this scene yet. This is exciting. We get a real, like, rewrite moment. By rewrite, I mean we're making shit up. It's a little toasty in here, so I have my, um, spray bottle so that I can mist myself like a plant. Just don't worry about it. Fuck dreaming about Edward, we've got other things to do. This is also an opportunity to add a little bit of intrigue because we could have her sneaking out. We could have her like telling Charlie she's going hang out with Jacob. So since Jasmine's there in the next scene, we could like have her lie for Bella. That could add some layers. Maybe we don't start this new scene yet. We say before I could even collect my thoughts, but I shook my head and hurried inside to dump my backpack. And then Stephanie Meyer loves having super detailed scenes of Bella cooking really basic meals. So we could have her make some sandwiches. I rummaged through the fridge and cabinets, but there wasn't really anything to bring to Love Push for Lauren and I to have for dinner unless I wanted to feed her a PB&J on stale bread. We could also make her relationship with Lauren a little awkward if we wanted to. Like maybe Lauren thinks this is a date or something like that. Slam my cabinet, I decided to just pick up something on the way. Used the bathroom, yanked out my ponytail, ran a brush through the knots and dropped my backpack in my room. 
jogging back downstairs to I'm trying to harness her I'm gonna tell you everything that happened but none of it matters and it's boring type vibe but doing it like a little quicker <laughs> jogging back downstairs to write a note for Charlie he probably wouldn't get home before me I peeked at the clock and it was almost four hanging out with Jasmine Black for a few hours. I'll be back after dinner, but before curfew. Love you, Bella. I read it over a few times before nodding, satisfied, magneting it to the fridge. Is magneting a word? Looks like no. Mounting, imagining, igniting, clipping it to the fridge. My truck revved away surprisingly smoothly, which I took as a good omen. Okay, I didn't let myself get too in my head about my conversation with Lauren throughout the day, but by that point, I was forcing myself to breathe evenly. I wasn't scared of Lauren, but there'd past tense. Never been anything particularly comfortable about our interactions. I'm trying to think of like the cheapest option that a teenager would have in Forks, Washington for getting food versus like a higher end thing that she could still afford so that she can be like, I was going to get her McDonald's, but instead I got her some Cane's chicken fingers so she'd like me. I pulled in and ordered a burger, a fish sandwich, and one large order of fries to go. Then I added two milkshakes. I worried about the fish keeping on the drive, but I knew Lauren didn't eat beef, so I just hope for the best. Drive was quiet, save my rapid heartbeat and the chug of Fred's engine. Was that what she named her truck? I thought it was, but I could be wrong. We'll just pretend for now. It passed quickly as I imagined every possible way this conversation could go. What if Lauren thought I was crazy? What if she laughed? <laughs> the end all. If she laughed at me. What if she took me absolutely seriously and turned the Collins over to some underground supernatural police? I shook my head hard. Maybe I am crazy. The beach appeared so quickly it startled me. I parked at the top of the hill and opted to walk the rest of the distance down. Not nearly as brave a driver or reckless a parker as Mike. I don't know if I'm keeping Stephanie Meyer's author voice or if I'm just writing poorly. The bag of diner food was still warm against my leg, my thigh. And I hoped Lauren arrived before it got soggy. But Lauren had beat me there. She was perched on the same driftwood Jasmine and I had spoken on a few weeks before. Her yellow cardigan wrapped tightly around her. She had been wearing a black and white flannel at school. Did she change to a cuter outfit? I wonder why. The jeans she had on were different too. Darker wash with flared legs. Hey, she said without looking up. I didn't know she'd seen me. Hi, I brought you a fish sandwich. I sat beside her and awkwardly shuffled one of the milkshakes into her hand while digging through the bag with a free pinky on my other hand. She smiled and took it from me, easily divvying up the food, making it look easy. I was always jealous of girls with that kind of casual grace. And that's why Bella hates women. Now I'm trying to think of what kind of information Bella would think that she could get from Lauren, could get from Lauren, and what would actually be helpful for her to know Plot wise, so what's going on? Lauren asked as she shoved a straw into the lid of my milkshake. Right to it. Uh, well, I said. I took a long drink to give myself time to collect my thoughts. I just had some questions about the Collins. 
I slurped too fast and choked, sending myself into a coughing fit. Lauren patiently chewed on a fry and waited for me to collect myself. <laughs> waiting for me to quiet down. There's no way you haven't noticed anything weird about Edward yet, Lauren said. You guys are practically glued to each other. A little jealousy? Well, yeah, I admitted. It is about them. And I assume you have an idea what they are since you asked to meet on the reservation. I balked at her. Did Lauren know? everything? Well, she said, you're at an advantage since you're friends with a few of the Quileutes. I don't think it would take long to lose Edward's interest if you hung around here for long enough. You could also drop biology since I know you already have a credit for that course from Phoenix. Wait, I said, what are you talking about? Lauren blinked big brown eyes at me. Are Lauren's eyes brown? I don't remember. Let me know in a comment. I bet they're blue. Getting away from Edward. It's a dangerous situation you've gotten yourself in. That's not what I wanted to talk about, I said. I just wanted to know what you knew about vampires. She said it so flippantly, like it was so obvious. I hadn't said it out loud before. I hadn't heard it out loud before, not in reference to Edward. Her words sat heavily on the branch between us. I couldn't move. Lauren took another bite of her sandwich and watched me. So you think they're vampires? I finally said. Duh, Lauren replied around a mouthful. I thought you were keeping up with this. I had my suspicions, I said quickly. I just didn't expect you to be so forthcoming and confident, and frankly, I didn't know where to take the conversation from there. Luckily, Lauren did. They're vampires, she said confidently. I've been watching them for years. I have a few documents I can share with you, research, and my own observations. But trust me when I say that I know what I'm talking about. And you're not safe being that close to them. How did you get all of this alleged research without getting close to them? I know what I'm talking about, she repeated. What if Lauren has some kind of tool or like a weapon that keeps Edward from reading her mind and stuff like that? She pulled a necklace from beneath her shirt. It was a bright silver chain with matching silver pendant. She squeezed and a compartment popped open. I leaned over to gaze into it. It's herbs, she said, and a few flowers. I honestly... Don't remember all of them, but it's a mixture from one of the elders here. I'll ask for another for you if you'd like. What does it do? I asked. It's a shield, she said. It blocks their powers. Like, Edward can't read my thoughts. I try to stay away from him so he won't try to read them because he'll notice if he can't. He probably already has. He hasn't mentioned. I started, but cut myself off. Lauren's eyes widened. So you know he can. You two talk about it. I mean, not in so many words. Bella, she said earnestly. She crumpled the empty sandwich wrapper and tossed it to back in the bag to take both my hands in hers. If he's sharing this kind of information with you, you're in greater danger than I thought. He's going to kill you. What if we end the scene there? And then like we can cut to Bella getting home 
and she's got something like Lauren has shared these documents with her. So she has reading material and then we can have her learn everything that she learns from the weird Google searches there and maybe whatever else we think would be helpful. So yeah, I think we added some intrigue. I think we have grown Lauren's character in that dynamic a little bit, which is always fun. I love Lauren. Yeah, let me know what you think of this scene and what ideas you have and what information you think Bella should learn in that document. And I'll see you next time.